Phuket word is somewhat of a flat earth legend. His videos have given us wonderful examples at the word salad possible from a flat earther. Now he has delved into the chasm of his mind and he has bought for us another gem of a video. This time he's responding to flat earth memes. Welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable, encrypting all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensuring that your IP address remains hidden to make sure no one can see what you do online. On top of that, they block ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts, and unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you like simultaneously. Now in this day and age, the internet knows almost everything about us, and that's why we should care about our online data. So you can use Surfshark to encrypt your personal information and send it via a secure VPN tunnel so that no one can see it without your permission, which is great for protecting things like your ID. Now Surfshark and its hack lock system will get alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised. Hacklock scans various databases of leaked information and notifies its users if their data is found so that they can take action. Click on the link in the description or go to surfshark.deals slash simandan and use my promo code simandan to get a whopping 83% off and three months extra free. Right, back to the latest video which sees Phuket Word debunking some flat earth memes. Now as usual, he doesn't understand much. Hold on to your face palm protection, people. So, let's have a look at uh, these memes and uh, I'll give some responses to them. Uh, this one says, after 1500 hours on YouTube, you have become wiser than all the universities combined. Become a flat earther. Well, there's quite a lot of assumptions there to start with. Well, that's sort of true, isn't it? Most flat earthers think they know more than all of the scientists ever. By the very nature of your belief, you automatically must believe that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with YouTube as a resource for all kinds kinds of information. It's a massive uh, vault of uh, things that people have posted on a myriad of topics. You can find anything you want as long as it's not too controversial on YouTube. Uh, but you can certainly find uh, lots of uh, experiments and uh, things like that, uh, that that people have done to show you that uh, there is no proof whatsoever that the Earth is a sphere. In fact, there's uh, oodles of proof that uh, we live on a level stationary Earth, uh, but nothing to indicate that we live on a sphere. So what Phuket Word has done here, instead of debunking this meme, he has literally proven it to be correct. He actually does believe that watching YouTube makes him smarter than all scientists ever. Uh, but of course, a lot of arguments about it. Um, but. Uh, <clears throat> Of course, a lot of people might have come across the Flat Earth because they watched a video on YouTube. And of course, people like myself uh, talk about it and post videos about uh, our findings uh, and our research on YouTube simply because it does reach a, a vast number of people and it is very easy and functionable to be able to... Functionable? Functionable? Functionable, yes. <laughs> I think so. And this guy thinks the Earth is flat. Amazing. So, uh, it's a great resource, uh, but that doesn't make you wiser than all of your universities combined. Uh, what university, just because you get a university degree, does that mean that you, you know the Earth is a spinning ball? Uh, what difference does going to university make or what difference does having a degree make? And, and besides, there are plenty of very smart, intelligent people with degrees up to their eyeballs that uh, don't believe the official narrative that we live on a spinning ball. Yes, but they aren't science degrees, are they? But what does a degree prove? It proves that you've studied a certain topic for years almost every single little part of that topic. Now, if you have an earth science degree, for example, then yes, that does qualify you to talk about the shape of the earth. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Uh, water cannot curve, balloons are fake, become a flat earther. Another idiotic answer to that question or demand for bendy water. Now, of course, we're talking about uh, bodies of water 
water is known to be level uh, in all instances and uh, if it's not level uh, then it will flow it will flow down curves it doesn't just bold and bend and not flow anywhere which is of course what water would have to do if it was on the outside of a spherical earth would it because as far as i can tell water does move around on the surface of this planet and the planet is spherical so so instead of coming up with some actual scientific measurements of curving bodies of water we have this little parlor trick with a, a, a balloon that's been charged with static electricity which will indeed pull the water and that does uh, that's that's real science i suppose it does demonstrate a relationship between electricity and water or flowing water at least uh, there's movement going on there there's something very interesting happening there but that's not even what is supposed to be the physics that holds water to a spherical earth is it it's supposed to be gravity so this isn't a demonstration of gravity holding bodies of water to the outside of the earth it's just a, a balloon <laughs> that's been statically charged making water bend a very th a thin stream of water bend and i do agree with you here actually however i do think the meme is funny because the static electricity in the balloon is making the water curve here and the instant reaction from a flat earther would be to cry fake let's move on to the next meme shall we uh here we have uh a picture of a spherical earth in space and these uh two uh, spirit levels on them and of course uh, they aren't horizontally level uh, with each other uh, we've got London over here and Stockholm on the right here it says no matter where on earth you place a spirit level it is level because the earth is flat become a flat earther I'd be interested to hear his opinion here because this meme makes a very solid point if indeed you do place a spirit level on the ground flat at two different places on earth that are quite far apart then yes they would be at a different angle to each other. Now, of course, this is one of those uh, uh, thought experiments that you have to have. We can see here that if we were to see such a vast uh, section of the Earth at one time, uh, a globe Earth, that is, uh, the spirit levels would not be horizontally plumb. They wouldn't be flush, sorry, with each other. Uh, they would, in fact, be angled like that. Uh, but, of course, the assumption is that... Uh, the word level refers to a, a certain distance from the center of an assumed spherical earth or a circle, a geometric circle. So uh, just like drawing a, uh, a circle with a compass, uh, the, the level of that surface is always the same distance from the center. And this is the perception of level. And of course, you have to come up with this idea that, well, this uh, gravity is pulling everything down towards the center so of course the uh, spirit level will still read level even if it's gone round a curve from the first measuring point or reference point okay but none of that's got anything to do with this argument let's use rulers instead you place two rulers at different points on the ground flat on earth and those rulers will be at different angles to each other what you just said did nothing to debunk this argument. But of course, this is not something that we can do in reality. In reality, if you have a horizontal uh, line that's plumb uh, or uh, perpendicular to plumb, and then you have that going off on a straight line, uh, then that is your level. If there is any deviation from that, then of course it is uh, not, not level with the first reference point. Uh, so this is just an argument that insists that you imagine all kinds of things and you believe in concepts of gravity and uh, and certain mathematical models and you're allowed to say that uh, even if something is uh, at a different angle to something else in a different location it's still level because it's the same distance from the center of the earth he's dodged that one like vince vaughan and his average joes isn't he Let's move on to the next one, shall we? And this one, uh, the moon is local and very, very close. Become a flat earther. Another ridiculous uh, thing here. I mean, we d really don't what know what the moon is. Except we know exactly what it is. Uh, it's, it's a funny meme, I must admit. Uh, but of course, it doesn't really mean or prove anything. Uh, but uh, it's difficult to 
to to know for sure the distance of any luminary in the sky, the sun, uh, the stars, uh, all these distances that we hear about, uh, the sun being 93 million miles away, are just uh, prerequisites for the model. They are necessary for the model the heliocentric model. There's nothing that's ever been properly measured or proven. And if people say that they've uh, uh, gotten radio signals, uh, radar signals back from the sun that's uh, 93 million miles away, then uh, you really are living in cloud cuckoo land because that's just simply impossible given the assumption that you're moving through space at thousands of miles an hour and spinning at the same time. There's no way you'd get a radar signal back Tell that to Eshelman, Barthol and Gallagher, who were studying radar echoes off the sun in the late 1950s. Moving on. So, this one. The water in the bath is flat. The soil in the potted plant is flat. So the whole globe must be flat. I'm special. Become a flat earther. Well, again, uh, where does it change? Where does the physics of water change? Ask anyone to, to give you a, a measurable example of that, and they can't. The physics of water doesn't need to change, Phuket word. A bath is tiny. The planet is huge. It really is as simple as that. And actually, you probably could detect a very, very slight curve in an Olympic-sized swimming pool, for example, with the proper equipment. There's, uh, uh, the water in a bath is no different to the water in a lock or a lake or the ocean. Uh, and when the water in the ocean has somewhere to go, it will, or the, ocean, or the water in a, in a river, it will flow to a lower elevation. But if you believe you're living on a sphere, when, uh, no matter whether you understand the concept that uh, there's no up and down in space, the fact is that you assume that when you're stood on the Earth, that the surface is uh, going or curving down and away from you. So... In the real world, when um, water is going down and away from us, it will indeed flow down a curve or down a waterfall or down a, even a few inches over several kilometers or miles uh, along an aqueduct. This is uh, physics, real physics of water on the real earth that the Romans used to their advantage to get water from high up on, on mountain reservoirs all the way into cities where it, which were at a lower elevation. Elevation is not the same as Earth curvature, buddy. Elevation and topography is there despite Earth's curvature. If there was no elevation at all and Earth's surface was totally smooth, then water wouldn't flow anywhere. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> this one. Are you thrown back in the train if you jump as it moves? Yes. Become a flat earther. What really happens and does it make any difference? I mean, what is the point in talking about this? We're talking about real physics, I suppose. We're talking about conservation of momentum. So, yes, if you are in a train and you uh, jump while it's moving along, then uh, you might well not necessarily... The train doesn't suddenly start uh, moving independently from you. You have that inertia. You're going along... Uh, with this, you, you have the inertia that you're being carried, you are part of the train until you uh, detach from it. But you're still travelling. I mean, that's just normal physics. Wow, you hashed that one up. We do not fly back, no, because there are no horizontal forces acting on us whatsoever. Yes, when we jump, we retain the speed of that train. But crucially, the air inside that train is also travelling the same speed as the train, so it does not interact with us. And a similar one here. It's not flying. No movement or motions whatsoever. Perfect, still and stationary. Become a flat earther. So again, this relates to our experience on the earth, is that it is level and stationary. It's not curved for all the other reasons we've talked about. But of course, if you again, if you're in an aircraft that's moving along, uh, then you are moving along with the aircraft until you start to try to become... To become independent of the of the movement, then then you will uh, encounter or experience the fact that the aircraft is moving. So why can't you apply that to Earth? You've just argued that we don't feel much movement on a plane because we are travelling along with it. Well, we're also travelling along with the Earth too. Use your own argument, Phuket word. Well, this of course is talking about things going along in a straight line. The Earth is said to be is is this is not it's not. There's, there is, there shouldn't be any linear conservation of momentum when we're talking about a spinning globe. 
because that is continuous acceleration or angular momentum. So arguing about linear momentum and conservation of momentum with a, a linear path is totally obsolete. And again, it just shows that uh, it's not taking into account what's supposed to be happening if you're talking about the physics of being on the outside of a spinning globe. Yes, we rotate and we orbit, but we do so at a constant speed. Now, this means that according to physics that you cite so much, we may as well be stationary. Moving on. So here we go, uh, an argument about gravity. Meanwhile, on flat Earth, without gravity, you don't understand science, become a flat Earther. So here we have, again, this uh, concept. The concept of gravity is nothing but a thought experiment or the assumption that there is a force directed towards the center of uh, a, an imagined spherical Earth. And, of course, you would need this force to... Uh, make sure that you did stay on the outside of a spherical earth and, and, and given real physics we know that if you encountered a curve that wasn't level then you would slide down it you would indeed slide off the earth so uh this concept of gravity is is a requirement now of course just because you suddenly uh, uh, perceive the earth as not being a spinning ball or level uh well, you're still denser than the air around you, and, still, and so are most objects. Could have predicted that one. Gravity isn't real, but density is. We've debunked that one many times. Let's look at his last one, shall we? All right, this is the last one, really. Uh, this is uh, a map. Uh, a map that has been adopted by many in the flat earth community as it were um, because it is uh, an interesting way of looking at or, or a new way of looking at the layout of the land uh, now it says here all earth maps come from the extortion of I'm not a THR map uh, from that of a globe because earth is flat become a flat earther so <sighs> um, you really have to understand how map making, making works and the, the azimuth of a north pole for a polar projection well basically the globe is just two polar projections it's the nor a north pole and a south pole they are arbitrary points it just so happens that the north pole is assumed to be a point beneath the the southern i'm um, sorry the the north pole polaris so what you have is this azimuth uh map which is uh based on the angles uh that you would see things from your point on the north pole and uh, this works well as far as uh, the time zones and things like that what is he blithering on about i've had enough of phuket word for one day this just seemed like a damage limitation exercise didn't it well there we go another flat earth friday all done and dusted for another week thank you so much for watching today it truly is appreciated if you enjoyed it please do consider subscribing to the channel we're on that push we're on that march to half a million about thirty thousand to go uh, and of course, if you really, really enjoyed it, hit that like button too. Just enough time to once again thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in the description or visit surfshark.deal slash simandan and use my code simandan to get that 83% off and three months extra free. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you on Tuesday where we look again at chemtrails. See you then. <laughs>